All right, so what I'd like to do is show you guys how to um, evaluate our trig function. Is it all six trig functions or just one? Yeah, just one function. So we need to evaluate the trig function. Now, I know that this line is not going to be on the unit circle, right? Because my evaluation is not what I, um, or not what I previously used for the unit circle. So, right, my coordinate point is uh, not, you know, square root of 2 over 2 or uh, square root of 3 over 2. So a couple of things I'm going to need to remember. What is cotangent for any given point? Well, cotangent, remember, was the inverse of tangent. And remember, tangent is y over x, right? So the inverse of that, I'm sorry, the reciprocal of that, cotangent is going to be x over y, right? And it's a negative. So we have, so far we have a 3. Well, what can I put 3 over? 1, right? So therefore, we have a negative 3 over 1. So remember I told you guys, if you know it's not on the unit circle, draw a triangle. Right, because you're going to have to use right triangle trigonometry to solve this. So, I have a negative three over one. That could equal negative three over one, or that could equal three over negative one. We don't know yet, so let's draw both of them just so you guys can see. Well, negative three, remember it's x over y. So I can do negative three, one, two, three. So I could use this triangle, or it could be 3 over negative 1. I did a horrible scale. No one's judging. It's got to make at least somewhat close. Okay, so we have two possible triangles it could be, right? Does everybody see why? Because a negative can go up top and bottom when it's a negative. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter. However, they do give us a constraint. They say cosine has to be greater than zero. Well, when is co remember cosine um, relates to our x values, right? X over our radius. And our radius is always going to be positive. So when is my x values greater than zero? Well, that's going to be in the first and the, the first and the fourth quadrant. So therefore, this is going to be the triangle I'm going to use. So I'll redraw this triangle. I'll say that's my theta. That's 3, negative 1. So to find C, or actually what we're using it now, we're calling it R. So I have 3 squared plus negative 1 squared equals R squared. 9 plus 1 equals R squared. 10. 1. So therefore, r now equals the square root of 10. Okay? I can't simplify that any further, but they say uh, <clears throat> um, to negative 3. Is that the last thing? Find the values of this. Oh, yeah, we do have to find the values. They do want us to find all 6. All right, so I figured out that cotangent was negative 3. I can easily find out tangent because, guys, tangent of theta is going to be the reciprocal of that, right? So that's going to be a negative 1 -third. Okay? Tangent and cotangent, you don't need to know what the radius is or our hypotenuse. Right? So those are easy. However, to find sine of theta, we had to know what our hypotenuse was. Because sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's going to equal a negative 1 over radical 10. Rationalize the denominator. So you get a negative radical 10 over 10. Huh? Was three not negative? No, remember the three is positive because remember when cosine is greater than zero, that means my x value had to be positive. So this is the only triangle we're using. We can't use this one because cosine is negative in this in this quadrant. Why is cosine negative? Because remember cosine reflects the x value. So therefore, if sine of theta is this, um, we can do the reciprocal function, which would be cosecant of theta is a reciprocal, which would be radical 10 over negative 1, which equals a negative radical 10. If I do cosine of theta, that's going to be my adjacent over my uh, hypotenuse. So it's 3 over radical 10. Rationalize the denominator. 
means multiply the square root of 10 on top and bottom. And you get that answer. Therefore, the secant of theta is going to be the reciprocal of that. And already did, and we already know cotangent is negative three, so therefore tangent is negative one third. All right. So the main important thing that you guys need to make sure you understand is that they give you something you know it's not on the unit circle. You're going to have to create a right triangle so you can determine what the hypotenuse is. Then, once you know what the hypotenuse is, make sure you use the constraints so you know which quadrant you're creating that triangle in, and then just evaluate using your trig identities. Yes? If cotangent is x over y, then what does secant and cosecant? <clears throat> Sine is y over r. Uh, yeah, I know what those are, but I don't know what those are. What's the same? Y over r, so therefore the cosecant mm -hmm. is the reciprocal of that, which is r over y. Cosine is x over r. Secant is x is r over x. And remember, r represents your hypothesis. Good questions. Last thing. No.